Week two, back at it. Uh, second week of training, we're done. Happy to be back in some routine, you know, I go a bit stir crazy when I'm, when I'm sat at home not training. Building muscle this week, been tough so far and uh, hopefully another tough session today. Let's get cracking. So we're increasing the volume, we've done his rep max testing last week. And I just want to say before we start, look, rough as old boots today, so apologies for that. Old um, boots? Old boots, <laughs> absolutely rough as old boots. That, that dreaded cold's actually got hold of me this time, but... Yeah, we're still here, we're, we're still, still working. Here. We're still going, we're still good, don't we? That's what we do. We're going to increase the reps slightly. We're going to work on hypertrophy now. Everything that we do is full body workouts. We're mainly going to be looking at the deadlifts today, um, getting his form bang right and controlling the movement, slowing things down and looking to build some muscle mass. <laughs> yeah, and I'm going to say that, man. And this is our warm up drill on Monday hip extensions. So it fires up the glutes. Uh, it's really important to stimulate the glutes before you do your compound movements. This weight is exactly how it were on Monday because nobody has a fucking clue about this exercise and it's really important that you need to know switching your glutes on and firing those muscle groups up are really important if you want to go do things like deadlift squats and the likes of those. Just make the lap. Keep the tension on the back. Yeah. 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 We're just taking the back and head up. Yeah. So keep that back nice and strong. So just to reinforce the, the message of an important long warm-up. This session started at 8am. Have a look. Yeah, we're approaching 20 past 8 and we're still warming up. We're not there yet, okay? So it's really important that you spend time on a good warm-up. There's no point going in thinking that you've done a working set when your body's not warm. It's not warm, you're not ready to go. When we start to lift, it's business time straight away, so we're straight in, we're not, we're not teasing our way into it. His body's fully primed and ready to go, and then we're lifting with intention straight away. Tease me. Tease me, baby. Tease me. So what we've got is, when he did his deadlift one rep max testing, he did 180 kilos for his one rep max test. So what we're going to do here is we're working four second negatives. So that he gets used to time under tension and he's loading his muscles up even more. So his first working set is 100 kilos and we're going to do a set of six with a four second negative. Negative means the eccentric load of the movement. So we're going down slowly, touch, drive straight back out again. And he accelerates through. Because he's a performance athlete and he's a sprinter, then we need to move a combination of slow and fast. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to control the movement down, touch, and then explode back out again for a set of six. How's it feeling? It's good. Keeping me sunny on. I sweat a few, uh, few pints out from the weekend. Fuck it. Put some more weight on. Going for it. Go for it, that's what we do. So he's on his third set now. He's on 120 kilos. So by the time we get to his one rep max testing again before he goes back to his club, we should see a significant improvement in his lifts. Exercise, we've got four sets of eight dumbbell step ups. What's really important is we're controlling it with the foot that is on the bench, so that's a stabilizing foot, and that's the leg that we're driving out of. What's really important with correct programming from here is he keeps all his muscles and his quads strong because he's got to go in for a meniscus operation, which is his knee ligament. We need to make sure that his muscles are still really strong going into it, and then when he comes out the other side in the rehab. He's got some muscle mass there and it makes everything easier so he can get back to running as quick as possible. So although there's an injury there, we need to keep his legs strong. And if you just have a look at Greg's, Greg's legs at the moment, there's no sign of muscle wastage yet, which is a great sign. So that's really good coming out of the other side 
of his operation. So although we do need to be careful, we need to tread carefully. We're stimulating the legs every time we train because we don't want to drop any muscle mass. You see this big scar here? So that's his, uh, that's his LCL operation that he had. So what we have to be mindful of is building up this vastus lateralis muscle, this quad group here on the outside. Now when he does an exercise like this, the knee is going to be really tempted to sway inside. But I'm constantly reminding Greg to keep that knee out, keep that knee out, because we want to stimulate this outer muscle, because we don't want that injury to ever occur again. So upper body, in yesterday's session, we did a vertical push and pull. So this time we're going to do horizontal push and pull. So what I mean by that is we're going to do a dumbbell press. So we're mainly targeting chest and shoulders for this one. So our incline dumbbell is already done a warm up set. This is his second warm up set before we get working. Let's go, Greg. Six. Got a four second negative again, so it's coming down slowly on both movements. He's going to do incline dumbbell press straight into a low pulley cable row. So this is the first round. This is how it should be, this is what intensity looks like when you train. Now you don't have to do cardio to get this, as many ways that we can get the intensity, so good work Greg, There's good job done. Obviously job done, losing a, losing a bit of water but good session, another big lift and uh, this man knows what he's doing so we're getting the job done, we're getting the results we want and uh, we're going to keep pushing on. I'm going out. <laughs> 